Okay, open the image in Photoshop. Number one. And first of all, we need to remove the background. Okay, to remove background, there are many ways you can use uh, in Photoshop. Okay, I will try to, you know, use the best method. Okay, for selection, right, there are many tools for selection. Okay, so in Photoshop, how many of y'all never used Photoshop before? Uh, yes, Nana, you have to download both image. Okay, the subject and also the background. Okay, you're going to change the background. Excuse me. Yes, sir. I don't have Photoshop. <laughs> okay, when you register, right, in the yeah. once you register, you get a message, right? You have to install and uh, the Photoshop. I just joined. I just the, <laughs> actually I got the message about seven thirty and just joined. Yeah. I see. Those I see, last yeah. minute so joined. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Now I I, know how, meanwhile, you can try to download in case if you manage to, you know, download. Curve. Yeah, I'll try my best. Yeah. All right, all right, great, great, thanks. Thank you, thank you. All right. Um, okay, so uh, just for your info, there is another application, web-based application, which looks similar to Photoshop. I don't remember the name of it. Anyone knows what is the name of the uh, browser type of Photoshop? It's free, actually. Anyone? I don't remember the name. PSD? Is it PSD? I don't know. Uh, not, not Adobe. It's a different application. It's a web-based application, but it looks similar to Photoshop. Yeah. Let me take a look and see. Uh, hello, sir. Yes. Uh, I managed to download in JPEG. Uh, I don't know how to get it into Photoshop. I, I you, go to, you go to Photoshop and then go to File Open. Go to File Open, is it? Uh huh. Uh, is it uh, new file? Come again. Is it new file? Open. File Open. Is it click on Open or click on New File? I didn't say new file, right? I said file open. Can you see my screen? Uh, Can you see my screen? Yes. Uh, go to file open. I'll go to file open. Okay, thanks. Okay, uh, file open. Okay. Okay, uh, thanks, Dinagaran. I think that, that is the software, if not mistaken. Oh, download. Oh, I see like that. Oh. Okay, is it Photopia? Okay, I'll go there. Yeah. Because I found another one is Photosoft. Is it? I don't know whether it's. Okay, thanks. I got it. Okay, great. Thank you. Yeah, the photo P is the one. Okay, I'll recheck. Okay, cool. Okay, you open the, the photo P application in browser. Yeah, reopen. What are the okay. next steps, sir? What is the next step? Then you open the image. You load the image into the software. Okay, just, just a moment. Uh, open from the computer, is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. From the web browser, after you go to the photo P, go to file okay. open. It will be similar interface like Photoshop. Okay, now, now after you open the image, right? 
Okay. Uh, yes, there is a uh, earlier the question. How many of you all never used Photoshop before? Never used Photoshop before. Okay, one. Me two. also. Okay, at least three. Very basic. Okay, some more. Two, yeah. three, four, five, six, seven. Only seven people. Okay, eight. Uh, yes, for uh, Victor, yes, for what? Never used before for the shop. All right, that's it. Okay, all right. So if you never used, right? Okay, so after you open your Photoshop, you go to open. Okay, go to open and then choose this the image that you have downloaded. Your downloaded image will be in your downloads folder. Okay, after you open, okay, you go to your this uh, object selection tool. Okay, you can see tool number four in your toolbar. On your left hand side, there's a lot of tools, right? Tool number four. Okay, you will see a magic wand. Okay, when you click and hold the magic wand, you will find object selection tool. Okay, you go to object selection tool and then you click and drag to draw a box around the image. Okay, so just change this. Okay, you click and drag. By default, you will get a rectangle shape like this. Okay, once selected, you let go your mouse. Okay, can you see my screen? Excuse me, what, what is that? What's the name of the... Okay, there because is a magic the... one. There is a magic one on the toolbar. You click okay. and hold the magic one. You will find object selection tool. Okay, yeah, I got it. Object, okay. Use the object selection tool and then you click and drag around this person here. Okay, but it's not it's not moving. Yeah, wait. Yeah, okay. okay, I got it. Yeah. Okay, it will be responding a bit slow if it is a web app, you know. All right, mm. so once uh, there is a, some selection, right? Okay, you can see my hand part is not selected. One of the shoe is not selected and okay. another shoe not properly selected. All right, so what mm. you have to do is you need to zoom in. Let's say, for example, I go to the zoom tool over here. Can you see there is a zoom tool? Okay. On the toolbar at the bottom, on my screen, zoom tool, or you can press Z in your keyboard. Press Z in your keyboard, your tool will become zoom tool. You zoom in, click near the hand area, it will zoom in. Okay. And then go back to your object selection tool again. You hold your shift key and then click and drag one more time around the hand. Hold your shift key, click and drag around the hand again. Then you get another selection now. So in my case, it have selected more than the hand over here, right? So I use my alternate key, alternate key to remove selection, shift key to add selection. Hold your alternate key and then click and drag where you want to remove, okay? Hold your alternate, click and drag to remove the selection. If you want to add selection, you hold your shift key, then you click and drag, okay? Something like this. Let's say this part, right? I still need to remove this. So what I'm going to do is, first I use my object selection tool. I get my rough selection, and then I go to my quick selection tool. Okay, after you get the rough selection, you go to quick selection tool, and then you try to remove the extra selection, or you can add more selection. By default, you can see on the cursor, there is a plus. Plus mean add selection. So, but here I'm going to I need to remove the selection. So hold the alternate and click and drag to remove the selection. When you remove sometimes it will deselect the subject as well. Okay, don't worry, you paint again on the hand like this. Just paint inside the subject. Understand or not? Excuse me, I am lost. Actually, can you repeat back? Because uh, I already zoomed. I already have the hand, then how to, to include the hand? 
because it's just un unturn the elbow. <clears throat> you click and hold the same tool again, you will find fixed selection tool. Okay. Magic wand, where is it? Yeah. Quick selection, okay. Selection okay. okay. You can see a brush with a plus. Yes. Okay, you paint at the pen area. Okay. Okay, if you if it excel, uh, selected the background as well, you need to remove the background selection, right? So hold the alternate key, click and drag at the background. All right. So let's say, for example, for hair area, you need to paint a bit more than the all the this tiny tiny hair over here. Okay, if you selected the background, hold the alternate, click and drag at the background. Okay, and then to to pan in your drawing, you hold your space bar. You hold your space bar. You click and drag to check all the edges. Okay, for example, at this hand area here, the selection is not good, so I just click to add selection, alternate click and drag to remove selection. Okay, something like this. All right, so I remove selection, add selection, hold the spacebar, click and drag. Okay, here the image is slightly blurry, but it's okay. Just click to add selection and to adjust the brush size, right? Okay, to make your brush size bigger or smaller because I need to paint at the smaller area. So I reduce the brush size by pressing the bracket key in your keyboard. There is a two bracket, one is a curvy bracket and then another one is a square bracket, right? The square bracket, you press the square bracket, there is an open and close, right? Okay, one is to reduce size, another one is to make the brush size bigger. Okay, just press the square bracket only. Okay, it will reduce the brush size, and then alternate click and drag to remove selection. Just paint on the subject to add selection. Alternate, click and drag, alternate, click and drag, alternate, click and drag. Okay, something like this. To add selection, you just paint one more time. Okay, something like this. Then hold your space bar, click and drag. And then you paint again to add selection. Hold your space bar, click and drag, click and drag. To remove selection, hold the alternate key or the option key in Mac, uh, and then click and drag. Something like this. Okay, can you try first? If you have any problem, please let me know. Once you know how to do it, right, then it will be much easier. Okay, if you have problem, please let me know. And by the way, how many of y'all are using the image that I've provided? Anyone? I'm using those. Okay, all right. Okay, when, when you want to composite images, right? Okay, one of the very important thing is the selection that you make. Very important. All right, and that is the first step. All right, so when you want to cut the person out, your selection must be perfect. Clear? Clear, everyone? All right. Okay, so since the selection must be very perfect, right? Okay, so what I'm going to do is, I'm not going to use these two tools over here. Okay, this is the commonly used tool to make selection. We can use object selection tool, you can use a quick selection tool, and there is a magic wand, and there is a lasso tool also, polygonal lasso, magnetic lasso, and also you have your rectangle marquee tool and uh, elliptical marquee tool. Okay, so these are the commonly used uh, tools to make selection. If you have a high contrast image, then you can easily use the object selection tool. Okay. But if you want a composite image very, you know, very perfectly to look very realistic and so on, you need to use the pen tool to make selection. All right, but I don't want you to, to use that now, but I just want to show only for this class. 
all right but you continue with the pick selection tool and also the object selection tool all right so now please take a look here you see as we select we have some problem you see some of the part is not selected and then uh, we need to add selection again and all that okay because we don't have the control on the precise position that we want to have the selection okay photoshop is controlling that all right and of course we still can modify like you you can go to pick selection tool again and then you paint again okay something like this and then let's say i paint something like this for example at the shoe area and then it will select the background as well and the line is not smooth if you notice right correct now the selection the edges is not smooth you see that means we don't have much control over here unless if you paint again again and again then can all right so instead of using this method what i will do is i'm going to remove the selection now all right just take a look first to remove selection you press ctrl d or you go to select and deselect okay you go to select menu and then you deselect to remove selection all right so i'm going to go to my pen tool okay p for pen tool and then on top here there is a shape or path by default if not mistaken it is path okay so i'm going to leave it as path let's say and then i start to draw around the edge of this person okay for example let's say i'm going to start to click here to zoom in and zoom out right you can use the zoom tool or you can also press control and space bar when you hold control and space bar your cursor will change to a zoom tool temporary okay you can click and drag to zoom in and zoom out all right just to make the workflow faster so i already put my first point and then the second point just simply click around the edge all right so it looks like you know a lot of work but the result will be much better okay so let's say i just simply draw click and drag click and drag click and drag you use the pen tool once you are familiar with the pen tool okay if you are start using now right it's going to be take a longer time okay but if you want to continue so i don't restrict if you are familiar with photoshop you are familiar with the pen tool uh, please proceed okay or else you use the object selection tool and also the quick selection tool okay i'm clicking and drag click and drag click and drag what is this okay meanwhile if you have any question please let me know if you're stuck somewhere please let me know you can share your screen and then i can guide from there i'm holding my spacebar to pen in my drawing hold the spacebar click and drag to move you see when you draw manually right you have all the controls where do you want to put the you know the line okay you are controlling not the photoshop is controlling for you but to use the pen tool okay you need to practice first right if you're unable to create a curvy line it's okay you can start with a straight line but when you're drawing straight line it needs to be you know you need to put a lot of points to get it like a curvy uh, shape okay for example over here let's say i want to make it uh, you know curvy right i can also use the uh, straight line i just click 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 and click still can but you have more points all right so let's say i click here okay if you manage to do curvy line you can just you know click and drag and then click you see you get a curvy line as well all right but for beginner i suggest you start with a straight line
What's the purpose of drawing all this outline? To make selection. We want to cut the person out from this background and then we're going to change the background to with our own other background. All right, so we need to make selection first. All right. Okay, does more or less point affect anything? No, it doesn't affect anything. Okay, just whether it's, you know, more detailed artwork or less detailed. And you can save time. If lesser point, you save time. More points, you it will take more time for you to, you know, click, click, click. Okay, only around the hair area, right? Okay, when I'm using my uh, uh, pen tool, only around the hair area, I selected slightly more than the hair area. Something like this. So that later I can use the select and mask to refine this uh, part. Okay, something like this. So just roughly. Okay, whenever there is no blurry edges, then I continue with the uh, more accurate line for those who are unable to you know make selection right so i will share this file once i cut the person out all right so not to worry okay the main thing is you need to know the workflow all right so after you cut it perfectly then you do the other stuff uh, the rest of the thing you can do it by yourself okay only the cutting part will take time and then you need to be you know right uh, Mr. Yavinesh, uh, yes. can, can you show again how to how we'll be able to uh, uh, do do these things? What is the uh -huh. action? You mean uh, the one I'm doing right now? Yeah. You go to your pen tool. Can you see my cursor? Oh, it's called pen tool, is it? Yes. When you okay, put your mouse then? over the tool, you find uh -huh. it where there is a pen tool. And then uh -huh. you start to draw. Just click, click, click around the edge. Oh, okay. Thank you. All right. So that means if we want to remove the whole uh, jumping figure, we have to uh, go through the entire picture. Yes, correct. Uh, but my, but my, I don't know what I did. Uh, uh, the, mm -hmm. There are a lot of... Uh, uh, running lot, line uh, a lot of white black white and black lines and then the sky will be pink color okay that is your object selection tool yeah so uh pen tool uh so i have to i i have to uh, I, I have to, uh, okay, listen, listen, listen. Uh, okay, earlier what I did was I showed you guys how to make selection using object selection tool and also quick selection tool. All right. Okay, that's what I want you guys to do. But what happened is the selection is not perfect. The edges is not uh, accurate. Okay, so what I did is I removed the selection by pressing Control D and then I start to use my pen tool. But for you all, you can continue with the uh, what we call the quick selection tool and also the object selection tool. All right. So after you make the rough selection using the object selection tool, then you use the quick selection to refine the selection. All right. Clear. Hope that's clear. Okay, for those who are using the same image as mine, after I remove the background for this person, right, I will share the file with you guys. All right, then we will try to match the color, adjust the, the blurriness, the sharpness, and so on. So basically, you are saying that um, um, what you are doing is more advanced. Lah. Uh, not advanced, it's more accurate. More accurate. Oh. Yep. So, but for beginner, I think this is quite difficult, right? Yes, correct. So, uh, easier. So this is more advanced, right? <laughs> a bit, lah, a bit advanced. Okay, sometimes if you made a mistake, right, you can undo immediately, control Z, and then try to continue drawing. 
in case if you if any one of you using an older version like for example uh, cs6 for example okay the software version uh, the older version to undo you press control alternate and z it's not actually undo it's uh, going back in the history state control alternate z just in case this image right some of the part is blurry so that's why when you use your object selection tool okay the selection is not perfect okay if you have a very high resolution image then the selection will be much better it okay, means uh, uh uh not you know some part is not in focus right it, it should be in focus and also high resolution then easier for you to use the object selection tool and also the quick selection tool But usually in the industry, okay, people prefer to use the pen tool. Okay, thank you. Noted. Yes, yes, Rex Wong. You're right. They integrated the AI technology inside this, uh, you know, object selection tool. If your image got more objects, right? Let's say, for example, you have fruit, you have balls, you have cars, right? It will identify the, the shape, the object. Okay, just for your info. Okay, almost done. All right. Okay, now everyone, please take a look here. Okay, I already completed my drawing here. So after finished drawing, okay, I use part, right? not a shape. Okay, after you draw the part, you need to make a selection from your part. Okay, so after you complete drawing, you need to close back the loop where you started. Okay, to make a selection, right, you can go to window and then you go to path. Okay, window and then you go to path. You can see there is a path panel. Okay, there is a work area. This is your part that you already drawn. Okay, you can click this third button over here, okay, to load path as selection. So it will become a selection, all right? So once you get selection, now it is same like, uh, you know, some of yours, which you, you use the uh, object selection tool and also the quick selection tool, all right? So once you get the selection like this, okay, we need to refine some of the selection. For example, the hair area, okay? To refine the selection, we go to select and mask on top here. Okay, so this all this option, right? We call it as control or option. Okay, select and mask. If let's say you don't see the select and mask, you see when I use my move tool, I don't see my select and mask. You need to choose any one of your selection tool. Then only you will see the select and mask. Let's say I click on my rectangle marquee tool, then I can see my select and mask. Okay, then I click the select and mask. When you click right, you'll get two options. One is the property panel on the right-hand side. Another one is the some brush tool on the left-hand side. All right, and then in the properties panel, there is a view mode and then view. You change this view to overlay so that you can differentiate the, the color different uh, easily. Okay, so what I do here, I use my second brush here refine edge brush tool okay use the refine edge brush tool adjust the brush size make it slightly bigger and then you paint at the border of this hair over here you see it will automatically remove the background and in order for this tool to work best right your background and your subject must have some contrast color if it is similar color then also still difficult Okay, let's say for example this hand area here also i can paint so you get a smoother selection at the edges okay just double check in case if you have anything goes wrong okay, this is fine i don't want to do anything okay i saw at near the watch area here okay this hand over here i just painted at the edge because i want it to be blurry a bit you see click and drag Okay, and this edges also. I'm using a very small brush and then I'm painting at the edges. When you let go, then it will update 
the, the color, the red color. Okay, let go your mouse, then it will be updated. Okay, now you can see my selection is blurry right now. Okay, click and drag at the edges. Hold the space bar, click and drag. All right, so let's say this one I ignore first now, just double check. Okay, over here also, just simply click and drag. Anywhere you can see the there is a contrast of color. Okay, you just paint it. Make the brush size slightly bigger, and then paint. See, sometimes you have to use a very small brush so that you get a better accurate uh, selection. So here, there is uh, some problem here, but it's okay for now. I'm going to ignore first. Use a smaller brush. See, this part is very blurry, so it doesn't detect the edges properly. It's okay. Ignore first for now. Okay, done. It's fine. Okay, let's say I already refined all the edges here and then I go to the properties panel on the right hand side again, go to the bottom of the panel, there is an output selection, okay, and you click uh, check the decontaminate color, it will match the color with the subject at the edges, okay, decontaminate color, and then output to new layer with layer mask, then you click okay. So what happened when you click okay is, in your layer panel, okay, if you go to layer panel, if you don't have layer panel, you can go to window and then choose layers. Okay, you can see it will make a copy of the layer and also it will add a layer mask, the black and white uh, box over here. This is your layer mask. All right, so done with this image. So what I'm going to do now, let me just delete the background layer. Okay, I already removed it. And then I'm going to crop this image so that, you know, it's not very big. Okay, I make a selection around the person here. I go to image and then I go to crop. Okay, then I'm going to save this file. Subject, save it in my desktop, save. Let me see how big is the file. It's about 15 Mac. Okay, hang on guys. Let me just put it in my Google Drive. is uploading less than one minute. Okay, how many of y'all are uh, already done with your selection if you are using other image? Can you just type done with the selection and also already, uh, you know, click at the uh, select and mask, new layer with layer mask. Okay, Stacy done. Okay, Nana done. Thank you. Mr. Yavinesh, I thought yes. you said you wanted to cut out the figure. Yes. But now you're doing a different thing with the background. Uh, what I did? You have changed the background into uh something that is not uh that's not uh the the original 
Oh, you mean the checker box, is it? Yeah, I thought you said you wanted to cut out the figure. Okay, actually, we already cut out the figure. Huh? Okay, the checker box is actually transparent. Okay, it's not a pattern, it's not a background, it is a transparent. All right? Understand? So you are saying is that you have taken out the background, remove the background. I already taken out the person out. You have taken the person out, or I didn't yes. see it. I didn't see how you remove the person. How I remove? Remember, I go to select and mask. Where? Select and mask. Select and mask. Okay, when you click the select and mask. Okay. Select and mask. Okay. It will become red and red color, right? Outside. Yeah, just now, yeah, just now I saw red. Ah, you saw right? Yeah. Then I go to the bottom of the property spanner. Can you see my cursor? Yes. I choose output to new layer with layer mask. Ah, okay, okay. When you click OK, right? Ah. You will get this. Oh, okay, okay. Thanks, thanks. All right. Okay, so I already put the link in the chat box for you to download the same image. Okay. In case if you're using same image as mine, you can use this image. Can you see the link in the chat? Click the link and then download the PSD file. PSD file, you can save it with all the layers and other information. Okay, after you download, you open your background image. Okay, you open your background image, you go to file, and then you go to place embedded. Okay, open your background image, you go to file, place embedded, and then choose your PSD file. Okay, let's say I choose my subject PSD, then place. Then you get this. Can you do that? If done, please let me know. If got problem, please let me know. Okay, thanks for your question, uh, Zul Hafiza. All right, so if you go to file, right, there is two place. One is place embedded and then place linked. Okay, place linked means the original image image information it will not be embedded into this file okay let's say you want to transfer the file right for example let's say i choose place linked and then i want to transfer the file to another computer i need to send a uh, copy two files together one is this background with the design which are uh, with the subject person here and also the the subject person file two file if i choose place linked Okay, place link also will reduce the file size. All right, it will just take the link as the information. Okay, it will not embed the file into this document. Okay, if you're familiar with the illustrator, you, you know what I'm trying to say. Okay, clear guys? Zula Pizza Panda. Um, sir, wow. Thank you, thank you. All right, all right. Okay, shall I proceed? Have you placed your image inside the background? Okay, Nana done. How about the rest? Uh, honestly, I am not following your class. Okay, no, no. worries. You just uh, take a look so that you get a, you know, get an idea how is the images, you know, matched together. For example, you can see once I put these two images, right? Okay, one is in a different color, another one is different color, right? Okay, yeah, so I, we will try I to match. 
the color and all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I can see that. Uh, you know, you you have embedded it into a new picture, but uh, yeah, but I'm not following the process, uh, You know. All right, right. No worries, no worries. Yeah. Okay, I I will share the recorded video so that you can you know practice slowly. You can rewind back and then watch again. All right. Okay. Thanks. Same goes to me also. All right, right. Sure, sure. No worries, no worries, sir. Okay. So after I we go to file and then place embedded. Why normally I just place embedded so that you know you don't have to suck it color. Eh? You don't have to find back all the images that you use for your design. All right. So instead you use place embedded so that the information will be loaded in the same document. All right. So after place embedded, choose your file. You will see a, a bounding box, the blue color box like this. All right. So this is a free transform. You need to press enter in order for you to apply, or you can adjust the size. You click and drag from the corner. If you're using a CS6, right, you need to hold your shift key and then you drag, all right, to rescale this. If you're using new version, you don't have to press the shift key, all right? So just click and drag to adjust the size and then press enter to apply the free transform, okay? After adjust size, after adjust position, press enter to apply the free transform. Then you go to your move tool in the, your toolbar, you adjust the position of the person. All right. Okay. Now, the process to match the image between these two images, right? Okay. Number one, you need to match the brightness and contrast. Okay. Match the brightness and contrast. If you go to your layer panel, okay, go to your layer panel. At the bottom of the layer panel, you have a few icons here. The first one is the, the link button, then followed by the uh, effects. Effect is the layer style. And then the third one is the layer mask. And then the fourth one is the adjustment layer. You go to the fourth icon here, adjustment layer, and then you choose black and white first. Okay, when you choose black and white, your image will become black and white, number one. And you can see the difference between these two images. Okay, the, the subject that we just placed, right, it's quite high contrast. And the background that we have chosen is not really, you know, uh, the contrast is very low, means the black color and the white color not clearly visible over here. But on the person, it's clearly visible. So we have to adjust the brightness and contrast first. Okay. So this black and white adjustment layer, right, is just a guide, temporary guide only. Later, we will remove back this, all right, number one. So to adjust the brightness of this person, you select the subject layer, then you go to adjustment layer at the bottom again, then you choose curve, okay? Select the subject, go to adjustment layer, you choose curve. And then for when, whenever we have this curve, right? Can you see this panel here? In the properties panel, you need to adjust this curve over here. Before adjusting, okay, just take a look first. If I adjust this curve, right? It will adjust for both background and also the subject. Okay, but I don't want to adjust both. I only want to adjust one for now. All right, so to adjust only one, you go to your curve one over here, you right click and then create clipping mask okay right click on the adjustment layer the curve adjustment layer and then you choose create clipping mask so what it will do is whenever we adjust now it only affect the subject can you see that okay create clipping mask first then only you adjust the curve and then how to adjust the curve okay for example usually Okay, the curve shape will be something like this, S shape. This is to add contrast. Okay, but in this case, we want to reduce the contrast. So I'm going to, the bottom part here, move it up a bit. The top part here, you bring it down a bit. Okay, to reduce the contrast. Okay, if you want to reduce further, you can click and drag. You can click and drag. Can you see my image now? It's more like, you know, very faded kind of effect. Can see or not? Can see the difference? No? Yes? 
all right and to check whether it's uh, you know before and after you can also turn off the visibility in your layer panel there is a eye icon over here you can turn on and off this is before after before after okay of course don't do too much huh? i can see the the face is like very flat so i'm going to move the highlight up a bit okay and then adjust while you're adjusting look at the image don't just simply change the shape of the graph like this but while you adjust you look at the image okay make sure it is not uh, you know like very washed out okay let's say something like this okay i don't adjust too much over here but what i'm going to do is i'm going to add contrast for the background okay we already edited the subject now i select my background layer and then again i go to adjustment layer i go to curve again now i do the opposite the top part i move it up the bottom part i bring it down to add contrast okay something like this and then i try to on and off before after before after so the darker color become more dark i can see the darkest point is on the c over here this area Okay, farm tak semua. Understand or not, guys? Why no response? Okay, thanks, Kalian. Okay, if you need me to repeat, please let me know. Anyone? You are trying to do, but didn't get it. I I I I lost at the black and white thingy. <laughs> Have you put the black and white, Catherine? You, you, you mean you, uh, you put, uh, you put the adjustment uh, layer. Uh, the black adjust, and white. Black and select the black and white, right? And Have then you put what, the black and white. Yeah. Then what do I do? <laughs> okay. After you put black and white, your image, the entire image will become black and white, right? Yeah. Then you select your subject layer. Okay. And then you go to the bottom adjustment okay. layer again. Then you choose curve. Ah, uh, sorry. You select the subject layer. One? Subject layer. Okay. Then select uh, adjustment curve. Is it? Curve. Correct. Okay. Got it. Okay. Um, then, then you right click on the curve one over here. Can you see my cursor? Where uh -huh. is my position of the curve? Ah, uh, cursor. Uh huh. Uh huh. You right click here. Ah. Uh, okay. Then choose create clipping mask. Ah. Uh, okay. Okay, after create clipping mask, okay, you adjust the curve to become something like this. Okay, depend on your image. Are you using the same image as mine? Yeah, yeah. Okay, then the curve should be something like this. Create clipping mask. And then choose the curve. Yeah. Okay, there's two points. I added two points. Top part, you bring it down. The bottom part, you bring it up a bit. Uh, sorry, because I was doing the screen and I cannot see you. <laughs> yeah, can you see my screen now? Ah uh, yes. Uh, so I go to curve. white color straight line, right? Uh huh. Okay. You at the middle one, you just simply click and drag down, and then uh, over here, click and drag up. Ah uh, okay, got it. Okay, when you change, you look at your image. The image. Eh, how come the image not change? I have to select the object, is it? The... Can you share your screen? Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. There is a green button, share. Uh, yes, my laptop is small, <laughs> cannot see. All right, all right. So. Okay, all right, very good. So okay. here, yes, click and, uh, and drag up. Up here, eh? Just yeah. click and drag. Drag. No. Okay, not too up, lower a bit. The nothing okay. change. Uh. Up, up, up a bit. a bit. Why you turn off the visibility? The visibility must be turned on. Ah, uh, this one. Oh, uh. no wonder cannot see the difference. Yes. 
<laughs> okay, okay. Ah, okay, okay. Now I can. Okay. okay. Move up, move up, move up. Okay. Move up. Okay. Okay. Okay, and then put another point at the top area. Bring it down. Yeah. Ah, okay, okay, okay. Got it. Okay. Okay, but but this too much lah. Lower down a bit. The bottom part lower down. The upper oh. part up a bit. Eh. Oh, oh, okay. You're not using mouse, is it? <laughs> I'm not used to mouse. <laughs> I can see that. <laughs> okay. Okay, okay. Oh, got okay, it. Okay, and Thank then you. select your background image, create another curve. This one? Oh, create another curve. Okay, this one opposite direction. The top should go up, the bottom should go down. This one go up. Ah. Bit too much. Yeah, too much. Okay, then this one go down. Yep, something uh, like that. Ah, uh, okay. Got it. Okay. Okay. Thank you. All right. So you don't fix the shape, but you adjust according to your image. It must match. All right. Okay. So let me share my screen again. All right. Okay. After you have this two curve, right? Okay. So let's say, assuming this is perfect, lah, assuming. All right. So you can remove the black and white now. Okay, select your back black and white uh, adjustment layer here and then you click at the dustbin or you drag and drop to the dustbin or you select the layer and press delete in your keyboard. And just now the background one, you don't use the clipping mask, right? Only the no. object. Yes, only the okay. object because background layer is sitting at the bottom. All right. Okay, thanks. Okay, cool. All right, so after you have uh, adjusted the brightness and contrast, now we're going to adjust the color. All right, to adjust the color, you select your the curve one over here. Then you go to create another curve, adjustment layer. And this curve, right, we're going to use it to adjust the color. Same thing like this now, also create clipping mask. Right click on the layer and then go to create clipping mask so that it will affect only the subject. Okay, so curve one to adjust the brightness contrast for the subject. Curve two is to adjust the brightness contrast for the background. And curve three is to adjust the color of the subject. Okay, to adjust color, right? We need to change the channel over here. In the properties panel, you can see RGB, change it to, let's say red color. Okay, the red channel and then I can see the background got more reddish color at the bottom here and also on the sky. Orangey, reddish a bit, right? Okay, so we're going to apply that color to this person over here. Okay, so I change the red color over here. If I just simply click and drag up, right, I'm actually adding the red color. If I put more, you can see clearly something like this. All right, so here also same. If you want to add red color to the shadow, you adjust this area. If you want to add red color to the highlight, highlight means the, the bright color. Shadow means the dark color. All right. So let's say I don't want to adjust the bright color. I want to adjust the, the darker part. The jeans, I can see it's more like greenish color, right? So what we do, we click and drag over here. Can you see the, my, my jeans now? jeans, the hair, all the dark area become red color. Of course, don't put too much, just a bit on the shadow area. And the highlight area, I don't adjust so much. So I bring it down a bit. So I have three points over here. Paham? Paham? No? Why so stressed? Okay, so change back the channel to another channel, let's say green channel. Okay, so the green color I'm gonna reduce a bit. Okay, so if you're not sure whether to increase or reduce, you try and error. Try to add green, try to reduce green. See which one is matching more with the background. In my case here, I can see like reducing looks better. Okay, so I reduce a bit of the green color. So now I can see my uh, jeans over here become more like bluish color instead of uh, greenish color and also the hair area over here 
okay i can see it's more like you know like bluish color and if you notice my dress also right can you see the contrast over here okay this effect is coming from this stuff okay later we can adjust back huh? for now i'm going to reduce the green color for the highlight okay shadow move up a bit okay and then i change the channel to blue channel okay try to reduce and also increase if i increase become bluish if i reduce become yellowish color okay let's say something like this you see so don't reduce too much just reduce a bit okay we are trying to match these two images so you need to look at your around your image okay whenever you adjust the color all right so let's say if i reduce further something like this go back to green color and then try to adjust again this is okay to remove any of this point right let's say i accidentally click few points over here okay to remove the point you hold your control key and then click at the point to remove it all right okay so i'm removing all the points i'm going to adjust the green channel again okay something like this then go back to red channel okay it's too much Okay, while you're adjusting, look at the image. Okay, something like this. Done. Okay, I need to adjust back the curve one. Okay, I go back to curve one. Okay, I reduce this. Reduce this. If I turn off this object, right? Okay, the color is already like that. Okay, when I change the red color, then I can see the contrast a bit. So I go back to red channel. <clears throat> okay, try to reduce the this one, increase the middle one. Okay, then I go back to blue channel. Then go back here, try to reduce the contrast a bit. Just the contrast a bit. Okay, I'm not sure why the blue color is not affected so much. Okay, let's say something like this. <clears throat> Go back here. Okay, can you see my curve here, the RGB channel? <clears throat> The red channel, I increase a bit. The blue channel, I bring it down. The green channel also, I bring it down. Okay, if I turn on and off, this is before, after. Before, after. Can you see the difference? All right. Yes. Okay, so one adjustment you do for your this subject another adjustment you do for the background as well if it doesn't match okay means i need to add some bluish color for my background over here so i go to add another curve okay i change to blue channel and then i try to increase this channel <clears throat> can you see the difference okay if i turn on and off before after before after which one is better? Before, after. Before, after. Blue is better. Okay. All right. If better, you maintain. If it is not okay, the previous one looks better, you remove that. All right. Okay. Because sometimes we have to try. Okay. Then only you will know. All right. So you check first. If it doesn't look good, then you adjust back this. Maybe you need to remove. I don't know. Okay, reduce curve, increase curve, so you try and error first.
Okay, this matching color, right, is very abstract. Okay, there is no certain value that you need to gain. It depends on how you are looking at the image. If you are having a color blind problem or whatever, then uh, uh, very difficult. All right. So maybe your eyes cannot capture the red color. Then we adjust. You feel like this is nice. Then it is nice for you. All right. Then if you want to get some, you know, uh, uh, feedback, you try to ask your friends whether it looks okay or not. Which one is better, and so on. All right. So let's say I'm going to leave it as it is right now. Okay. So the color adjustment done. Any question so far? Any adjust? Uh, any question? No question. Anyone? Or oh, everyone is busy doing the work. Nana, are you done? Okay, thank you guys. Okay, so after you have adjusted the color, right? Okay, now the next step. Okay, after adjusting first, we adjust the brightness contrast. Then we adjust the, uh, what you call? The color, to match the color. Okay, then if I zoom in, for example, uh, let's say I zoom in near the image over here. Okay, look at the image noise and blurriness. Okay, if I compare the, the background compared with this lake over here, right? Which one is more blurry? Can you tell me which one is more blurry? From my image here? The lake is more blurry. blurry. Yes, yes, exactly. Correct. Okay, thank you for that. Okay, so, so we need to match the blurriness. Okay, or the sharpness. All right. So I'm going to increase the sharpness for this man. I'm going to increase the blurriness for the background. Okay. So to do that, okay. So you select your subject layer. Okay. Remember, we go to file, place, embedded, correct? Correct. The man, right? Okay. Whenever you place embedded any image or place link any image, the image will become a smart object sorry the layer will become a smart object smart object means whenever uh, before uh, for those who are experienced with photoshop right when you apply any effects from the filter okay it will be permanent you cannot adjust the the whatever effect that you apply but if your layer is a smart object can you see there is a small icon over here let me try to make this bigger Okay, can you see my icon over here, the thumbnail? This thumbnail, right, got small box over here. Okay, so this is a smart object. When you have a smart object and then you go to apply a filter. In my case, I want to make it sharper a bit, right? So I go to sharpen and then smart sharpen. Okay, select the subject layer. You go to filter, sharpen, smart sharpen. Okay. You will get a, a box over here. Okay, move away the panel a bit. Okay, so let's say I move to this area. Okay, so here, can you see when I hold my object, right? It is there is no effect. When I let go of my mouse, then this area becomes sharper a bit. You can see or not? Okay, I hold, no effect. I let go my mouse, got effect. Can you see the difference? Can you see now? Okay, so this is by adjusting the amount, radius, and reduce noise. Okay, so reduce noise, you don't adjust anything. Let's say put it at zero. And then you adjust amount and radius only. Okay, so let's say if I, uh, I'm not sure what is the default value. Okay, when I increase the amount to a higher value, then you can see different uh, clearly. Let me go to the face, then you can see. 
Can you see this? Amount lower, okay, and then amount higher. Okay, if too much, then it doesn't look good. All right, so make sure when you increase, don't put too high. Okay, it will spoil the image. All right, so click, click and hold to change to see the previous effect, and let go your mouse to see the after effects. Okay, lower down a bit, and then you can adjust the radius as well. Okay, so when I reduce the radius, I can see a sharp lines. Okay, let me just increase this first. Increase the amount. Okay, the difference is very little. When I increase the radius, I let go. Okay, still, I think it's still processing. Okay, that's why it took very long. Just lower down. Okay, now I adjust the radius. Okay, I lower the radius to 2.2. When I increase, can you see the line? Increase some more. Okay, the darker part will become thicker. The highlight also become very thicker. Okay, so make sure your radius is not too uh, high. Okay, so you adjust. Click and hold, and then check. Okay, and then you adjust the amount, reduce the amount a bit. And this one, maybe I put two pixels, maybe. Okay, something like this. Before, after, before, after. Okay, the amount I'm going to reduce a bit more. Okay, not much, just a bit only. All right, then you click OK. Once you click OK, right, in your subject layer, you will see a smart filter. Okay, still loading. Okay, there is a smart filter. Anytime you want to adjust the value, right, you double click your smart sharpen over here. Okay, double click the smart sharpen, you still can adjust the value. Any filter that you apply, any filter effect that you apply, it will go under smart filter. All right, clear? Clear or not, everyone? Okay, cool. All right, and then for the background, I can see it's still, it doesn't look uh, very sharp yet. Okay, so the background, I'm going to increase the blurriness. So I select my background layer. Now, this is a normal background layer, not a smart object. Okay, if we apply any filter, it will be permanent, All right? So I'm going to right click on the background layer and then I go to convert to smart object. Okay, right click on the background layer, convert to smart object. Then only I go to filter, I go to blur, and then I go to, let's say, Okay, let's say I go to Gaussian Blur, let's say. Okay, you can see the moment I add on the blur effect. Let me just zoom in. Can you see the difference? Before, after. Before, after. Okay, so let's say I put 0 0.5. It's too high. Okay, just a slight blurriness. Okay, the radius I put 0 0.5. Okay, then I click OK. So it's already become blurry. If you want to check before and after, you can turn off your Gaussian blur and then on back. Off, on. Okay, because I put very little, you can't see the difference. You can check on your computer. All right, clear, everyone? Can you do that? If done, please let me know. Smart Sharpen and also the Gaussian Blur. Gaussian Blur is for the background. Smart Sharpen is for the subject. Depends on which is blurry, which is sharper. Okay, if done, let me know. Okay, Nana done. How about the rest? If you need me to repeat, let me know. Okay, Nanda done, Rex Wong done. Okay, 
mostly done. Okay, I'm going to proceed now. Okay, after we adjust the the contrast and also the the blurriness, then we need to see the the noise level. Okay, from the image here, can you see which one got more noise? Uh, noted, Stacy. Thank you. Okay, can you see which one got more noise? Anyone? No idea. Okay, I can see from the no. If I look at maybe the brighter part. <clears throat> Okay, over here. Okay, on the shirt here, the shadow area, okay, there are dots. I'm not sure whether you can see or not. Okay, there are dots over here. Okay, it could be the pattern of the shirt. So you double check from other parts of the image. Also here, I can see some dots over here. But then the C is quite clear. It's blurry, but it's quite clear. So I need to remove noise here, add noise for the C. Okay, so I select my background layer, then I go to filter, then I go to noise, and then I go to add noise. Okay, so the person actually got more noise compared to the background. So add noise for the background layer. Here you change to Gaussian and monochromatic. Okay, and lower down the amount, not so high. Okay. So I can see now there are dots over here. You can press OK first. You can try to on and off your, uh, this, uh, what you call, uh, add noise. If I off, this is before, after. Okay, it takes some time. Huh? Before, after. All right, understand or not? Can you see or not? This before and then after add noise, you can see the dots over here. Okay, maybe I can reduce a bit more, lah, not too much. Double click the add noise and then lower down the amount. Let's say I put two. Then I click OK. Understand or not, everyone? Yes, correct. Okay, so we add noise for the uh, background layer. So the foreground, I don't adjust anything. All right. So let's say we already done with this, uh, all this step here. Okay, another step is I want to put a shadow over here. Okay, for the shadow, what you can do, you can make a copy of the subject layer. Okay, select the layer, you press Ctrl J to duplicate layer. Okay, and then you overlay with black color for this layer. How do we overlay with black? You double click the layer at the empty space here. You double click and then it will open up layer style and then you go to color overlay. And then you choose some dark color. Okay, let's say I choose a very dark gray color maybe. Click OK, click OK, something like this. Then if you want to put this person, this shadow at the bottom, right? You press Ctrl T for free transform, Ctrl T for free transform, and then you just compress this. When you want to compress, right? You hold your shift key and then you drag, and then you bring it down, okay? Something like this. But of course, it is not going to be very clear like this. We're going to lower down the opacity and also we're going to add some blur effect. All right, maybe the position, I still can change this a bit. Go to your move tool and then you bring it somewhere around here maybe. Oh, wait, 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 I haven't do yet. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> too fast. Yeah, I know, I know. I know I'm going too fast. I will repeat again. In case if you can't uh, catch up, right? I will repeat again, don't worry. Okay, siapa yang tak faham the shadow? 
Anyone? Make a copy of the layer and then you go to layer style. To go to layer style, you double click at the beside the layer name. There is a blank space, right? You double click. You'll get layer style or you press the FX button. You choose color overlay. And then you choose a dark gray color. Okay. After you choose dark gray color, then you press control T for free transform. After you press control T, okay, you hold your shift key and then click and drag so that you compress the image. Okay, so originally it will be something like this. You press control T for free transform, click OK. Hold your shift key and then you click and drag. For older version, you don't have to hold your shift key. Okay, and then adjust the position. Press enter to apply the free transform. After free transform done, you apply the blur effect. You go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur, and then you increase the blurriness. Okay, so let's say I go to filter now, go to blur, and then I go to Gaussian blur, increase the radius. Okay, something like this. How come my image does not go the same way it goes the other way? Uh, can you share your screen? Uh, share screen. Share. 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 Yeah, this one it goes. Mm -hmm. And I drag. Hold your shift key. Hold your shift key when you drag from the top. Shift and then, oh, shift key. Okay, okay. Eh? Ah, eh? Eh? <laughs> shift and then. Uh, oh, okay. Okay. Okay, okay. Got it. Got it. Shift key. And then press enter. Then you go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur. Filter. Yeah, so slow. You <laughs> still cannot. Never mind. Oh, I'll do that. <laughs> uh, okay, Niji, you lost Kamana. Start the Rimana loss. Black subject. Okay, you duplicate the layer first. You press Control J. Select the subject layer, and then you press Control J. Okay, let's say say buang balik, eh? Say buang balik, eh? So this is the original. So select the subject layer. You press Control J to duplicate. Okay. Kemudian you go to uh, what we call layer style. Double click the layer. You go to color overlay and then choose a color a dark gray color click ok okay and then this layer right it should be below this subject okay if it is not below the subject right this adjustment layer will not affect this layer all right okay after you overlay you bring your subject to below the subject layer then you press control t for free transform okay hold your shift key and then you drag and then change the position then press enter okay i can see this now what happened here there is no clipping mask for these two layers over here Okay, so you need to add the clipping mask again. Right click, create clipping mask. Right click, create clipping mask. 
Okay, don't forget that. Your shadow, right? Your shadow layer should be below the subject layer. Okay. Then you add some blur effect. Okay, after you add blur effect, you go to opacity of the layer, you lower down. Okay, we don't want it to be, you know, very bright. Okay, maybe I can increase the blur effect more. Okay, something like this. Anyone done the shadow? Okay, Rex Wong done. In case if you have done up to here, right, you right click on the shadow layer. Okay, and then you go to rasterize the layer. After rasterize, you change the blending mode to multiply. Okay, for those who are familiar, Okay, so I'm going to select my shadow layer, right click, and then I go to rasterize layer style. Okay, rasterize layer style, and then I go to this blending mode. Can you see the normal over here in your layer? Change this to multiply. Okay, so that it will blend with the background. All right. Sorry, repeat again. Select the shadow layer. Right click and then you go to rasterize layer style. Okay, rasterize layer style. Then you go to blending mode over here. Can you see there is normal in your layer panel, right? On top of your layer panel, you can see there is normal. That is your blending mode. Change this to multiply. For shadow, the blending mode should be multiply. Okay. Okay. So, done. So, Anyone done? Please let me know. Yes. So, okay. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> yes. uh, how do you get this this uh, layer again? Uh, you mean the shadow layer? Yeah. First, you duplicate the subject. Oh, yeah, yeah. Then, then use the layer, then... Uh, okay. Layer style, Just... and then color overlay, change to black. Yeah, yeah, okay. Layer style. Okay, then then what do I do with the... What After blending? you make it smaller, have you put the uh, blur effect? Yes, yes. After blur effect done, you right-click on the layer. Ah, rasterize okay. layer style. Ah, 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 okay. Got it. Okay, after rasterize layer style, you change to multiply number one and also lower down the opacity. Uh, yeah. Uh, okay. Where is the multiply again? Here, normal. Can you see my cursor? Ah, okay. Can, can I change the size of the, uh, what you the background, uh, the what? The shadow, shadow. Be yes, bigger. you press control T. You can, you can, you can. You still can. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. On the object or on the like, on the, or the shadow object? Yeah? yeah, select that layer and then you press control T. Done? Anyone manage to complete it? Guys, Nanda, are you done? Nana, dah ke? Okay, great, great. Okay, 
setiap match. Anyone else? Tiga orang je. Okay, Catherine done. Okay, okay. After uh, Rex Wong done, thank you. Okay, after you have done this, right, the shadow, okay, what you do is the final touch is we're going to add a color look for this image. Okay, so you go to select the top layer. Okay, any layer doesn't matter. Select the top layer in your layer panel. You go to adjustment layer again. Then you choose color lookup. Okay, color lookup. And then when you go to your properties panel, right, you can see there is a 3D loot file. Load 3D loot file. You choose a different option from here. Any option doesn't matter. Whichever you feel looks nice. Okay, you can use your down arrow key to change the, choose one first, then use your down arrow key or up arrow key to change the setting. Okay. Okay, let's say something like this. Sorry, I was working on my screen. So, uh, what option do you choose? Uh, color lookup. Select the top layer. Go to adjustment layer. Color lookup. Can I not get it? Then you change the the three D loot file over here. Okay, select any one of the option here, and then you use your down arrow key or up arrow key in your keyboard to choose a different effect. All right. And if the effect is too much, for example, like this uh, foggy night 3DL over here, okay, it is washed out the entire color, right? So what you do, you lower down the opacity of your color lookup adjustment layer. Select your color lookup adjustment layer, you lower down the opacity so that the effect is not too high. Before, after. Before, after. All right. You select the first option, is it? Uh, I choose Foggy Night, yes. The 3D loop file. Okay, so usually this color lookup, right? We will put it at the final stage after everything is done. For the entire scene, we want to change the, the entire color look. Okay, we want to change the mode of the image. Then we change this. All right. Okay, now I actually I saved my image as another file. And then what I did is I remove all the effect that we already applied. Okay, so. Okay, you can see the difference now. This before we done any adjustment and this after making the adjustment. Can you see any difference? Before, after, before, after. Does it look like match the background? Yep. Okay, because we adjusted the color and also the, you know, whatever effect. You still can improvise this image. In my case, right, I can see the, the shoe here is very high contrast, okay, compared to the background. So maybe only at the shoe area, I can reduce the contrast a bit. You still can do that. All right. So, but for now, we stop over here. Okay, anybody done? Anyone done? Okay, very good. So what you do after this, okay, you save your file. When you save, right, you save it as a PSD file. PSD file, it will save with all your layers, one. And then after that, you go to file again, you save a copy, and then you save it as a PNG file, okay? Go to file, save a copy, you go to choose PNG, and then you give a whatever name, and then you save it. Okay, after save, you attach to the Google form. All right, for those who are unable to complete, don't worry. Whatever you have done, you just submit. If you're not done also, you still submit the form. I need to take the attendance for those who are still in the room until now. All right, 
So for those who stay, okay, hopefully you guys can get the certificate as well. So where right? is the Google form? Yeah, I'm going to send now. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm going to send now. Thank okay, you. let me copy the link. Okay. So I'm send, uh, putting the link in the chat box now. So another thing, are you when are you sending the video? Are you sharing with the? Are you sending to our emails? Come again. The video, the video, the recording of the video today. Uh huh. You are sending to our email, email. later. Yes, correct. Okay, okay so it will take one or two hours to you know to get the link from the yeah. uh, Zoom. Then I will uh, send it through email. Hopefully, I can uh, do something after I get your, your recording because I'm lost. <laughs> I don't have the, the software. So, right, using okay. the free one is difficult, yeah. Okay, okay, no worries. But anyway, please submit the form. Okay, sure, sure. Thank you. The file attachment is not compulsory. So, you submit the form. Okay, those who submit the form only will get the video recording and also certificate. So are you no. giving any courses uh, how to this one? If you come, do you have any website which we can? Uh, you can check out in uh, brainimation.com. Okay, thank you very much for the info. Okay, and then uh, one more thing before you guys leave, right? Uh, this for seven days, we'll be having training, eight to 10. Okay, so tomorrow's topic is on uh, Illustrator. Okay, did, did you manage to get the link? Yeah, but for other uh, classes? Uh, we have the seven days. So for All each right. different, you have to download the software, right? Yes, correct. Photoshop today and the last day, if not mistaken. And then tomorrow, there is an Illustrator followed by After Effects. After Effects, then I think Photoshop again, then Illustrator again, then Okay, thank you. Who's that? Who's that? Okay, Zul Hafiza, thank you so much. Okay, Nampak, you can see in the chat box, right? Okay, for the question. Okay, save as a what file type? You can save it as a JPEG or a PNG. But you save PSB first. PSB is your copy so that you can edit the later, later. Okay, but the one you need to submit in the form, please convert to JPEG. Not PSD, PSD, donkey. Oh, there is no option for PSD, is it? Couldn't find. Okay, you go to file and then you go to save. Okay, we'll install later. Okay, I don't know what do you guys mean. All right, great. Okay, so anyway, the, you go to file, save a copy, and then JPEG or a PNG, and then you attach in the Google form. Okay, so I'm putting the Google form one more time. Okay, even if you don't have the artwork, no worries, you still submit the form. I will send the video as well. All right. Uh, did you guys uh, learn anything today now? Sure, one question. Yeah, yeah. Uh, sorry, I don't know if I'm going to talk about it. Okay, so I'm going to say, remove background from the Photoshop. And then, when I open to the Illustrator one, dia punya kadang-kadang dia punya edge dengan dia tak ikut sama fit dengan itu bentuk tau. Uh, dia, how do you remove the background using uh, apa? Sometimes I'm using the selection tool uh, and whatever lah. Kadang-kadang uh. dia punya dia punya tu dia ikut bentuk asal dia punya box tu. So bila I buka dalam Illustrator dia jadi macam not fit the, the subject lah, the new, new new object. How do I to fit the object one lah? Uh, okay, you ada contoh lah nak tunjuk? Uh, sekejap lah, I buka. Okay. Uh, yes, Nana, you can submit the JPEG file. Uh, Angeline, don't worry. Uh, Catherine, save as uh, PS, uh, uh, PNG or JPEG is fine. Uh, okay, like this one, sir. Okay. Uh, like this one, uh, as you see, uh, not fit the to the logo lah. Contoh lah, ini macam. Bila, bila, bila I buka dekat photo, uh, Photoshop, dia fit. Bila I buka dekat Illustrator, dia ada macam some space, not fit the well. 
Ah uh, still tak faham juga. Macam mana tu? Maksudnya you punya dokumen kena besar lagi lah. No no no, dia punya bill I nanti kan kalau macam like this one uh, kalau macam contoh kalau macam kita remove ah ini ini dia fit tau. Ini gambar dia macam fit kan. Dia punya bentuk I dia. Tak kan? nampak. You are looking at which screen? Oh okey, tak nampak. Uh, yeah. Share your screen. Click the share button and then choose screen. Okay, like this one, you see, uh, bila I selection the people, uh, they fit uh, untuk uh, whole frame, kan? Mm -hmm. oh, okay, sekarang ni bila I buka itu, kalau macam contoh illustrator, kalau macam I save as PNG, kadang-kadang mm -hmm. dia, dia, dia jadi macam ni tau. Dia oh, tak dia ada ruang well. kosong ah, keliling yeah. dia. Ya, yeah, ya. Yeah. Okay, because memang ada objek keliling dia. Oh. Okay. Okay, so, okay. Yang ni you bawa dari illustrator ke? Uh, ini lah, ya, I dah masuk illustrator, I buka dia jadi macam ni lah. Okay, can, can you uh, allow me? Request okay. uh, control. Okay, kat sini. Mm -hmm. uh, allow me? Okay, dah. Okay, alright. Okay, okay, let's say something like this kan. Okay, mm -hmm. This uh, in illustrator. What file is this? You copy paste ke dari mana? Dari uh, daripada, daripada Google and then I remove the background and then I save as ah, yeah, yeah, Photoshop. Okay, so that means you tak nak ruang kosong sini kan? Atas, kiri, kanan, dengan bawah. Yeah, betul. 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 Okay, in that case, you need to crop the image dalam oh. Photoshop. Okay, uh, bila you masukkan, make sure uh -huh. dalam Illustrator also sama. Eh. You have uh -huh. to go to File and Place. Jangan oh. tarik letak ke dalam ni ataupun jangan copy paste. Oh, okay, okay. Okay, faham. sebab, okay, contoh ah macam ni lah situasi macam ni. I nak edit dalam Photoshop but I cannot because this is embedded. Oh, okay. Okay, dalam Illustrator, when you letak gambar, you go to file, kemudian you place. Dia akan jadi as a link. <laughs> okay, so for example, if I open my link panel, nampak this is embedded. I tak boleh mm -hmm. nak uh, choose uh, to edit the gambar. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if you open this in Photoshop, right, you can crop the image satu. Mm -hmm. Okay, then you save, so you tak ada lah space. Okay, faham. Faham tak? Mm -hmm. Even yang gambar tadi, go back to Photoshop now. I think gambar tadi, I dah, okay, sudah. Uh, open the original first. Uh, okay, boleh open yang ni PNG. Okay, hmm. nampak tak? You go to control click dekat layer one punya thumbnail. Hold okay. your control and then click thumbnail dia. Thumbnail dia. Oh, thumbnail dia. Okay, control click. You akan dapat selection. Bukan, bukan. Cancel. Hold your control click pada thumbnail. Thumbnail. Ah. Uh. Boleh. Jangan right click, control and click saja. Okay. Control click. Look at look at my screen. Ah, okay, okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. Hold your control, click pada thumbnail. You okay. akan dapat selection macam ni kan? Uh -huh. Then you go to select, you go to modify, you expand few pixel. Okay, katakan 5 pixel macam ni. Dia akan jadi besar sedikit. Selection mm -hmm. dia. Mm -hmm. Kemudian you go to image and then you go to crop. Oh, I see. Okay, okay, okay. Then you katakan saya save as. Eh? Saya letak underscore uh, 2. 12 underscore 2 dalam folder downloads. Now you go to Illustrator. You go to File Place. Mm -hmm. Choose the 12 underscore 2. Yes. Click and drag. Oh, okay. Got it. Faham tak? Okay, faham. Dia akan ikut dokumen punya size. The bounding mm. box. Okay. All right. Okay. Faham, sir. Right. Thank you. Okay. Right. Thank you, bro. Okay. So hope to see you guys tomorrow. So thank you so much. Hope you guys learn something today. All right. Thank you, sir. And thank okay, you so much. So don't forget to share to your thank friends you, and family members. Okay. On upcoming classes. All right. So thank you, everyone. So see you guys tomorrow. Thank you. Bye. Okay. Thanks. Bye, everyone. Bye, bye.
Okay, thank you, thank you, Mugi. Okay, bye guys. I'm gonna uh, stop the meeting. Okay, thanks, Nana. Bye bye. Yes, yes, I will do. So make sure you submitted the form. Okay. So if you didn't submit the form, I'm so sorry. Okay, thanks guys. Bye everyone. Please don't forget to submit the form. Bye.